Good evening. Welcome to the July 9th, 2018 meeting of the Rutherford County Planning Commission. If you would stand with us, please, for our prayer and our pledge. Bow with us. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're so thankful for this day and for the abundant life that we live here in Rutherford County. Thank you for all of those that are in attendance, and we know that there are those who have needs, and we ask that you hear their silent prayers and meet the needs of those families. God, we ask that you be with this commission, that we conduct business that are in the best interest of the citizens of Rutherford County. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Call the roll, please, Gail. Rhonda Allen? Here. Jim Averwater? Here. Lee Bogle? Here. David Jones? Here. Mike Cush? Here. Craig Lynch? Here. Chip Pinion? Here. Charlotte P? Here. Pettis Reed? Here. Mike Vaught? Here. Jeff Phillips? Present. We have a quorum. Uh, we have no minutes uh, to approve, and we have one item that has been withdrawn, and that item is uh, 7B18-3007, uh, Watercrest Subdivision, and that was submitted for site plan approval. Uh, that item has been withdrawn from our agenda. Under new business, uh, 6A submitted for final plat approval. 6A1, the item is 18-2026, new Zion acres, two acres on 15.28 acres, zoned RL, located along New Zion Road. Mike Pidon is the applicant. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you, and good evening, Commissioners. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this plat has, uh, it was actually originally submitted back in February of this year. It's been through several, di several different versions prior to the one that's before you today. Uh, the applicant is proposing to subdivide uh, 6.25 acres off of an existing 15-acre tract through the extension of an existing private easement. Uh, the existing easement is for an adjacent property, so this new lot that's being created would be the second lot off of that easement, which is why it has to go through the, the platting process. Uh, although the water line along New Zion Road can support a fire hydrant, and they are showing one to be installed on the new plat, which is a copy of that is on your, is, is on your iPads, uh, lot two will still be outside of 1,000 feet of the hydrant due to its distance from, th from the road. So really the, the primary reason this is coming before you today is for that fire hydrant requirement. Now I will point out as well, and if Mike could bring up the, uh, the plat, uh, you'll see on lot two, you can see the soil sites on both lot one and lot two. Uh, lot two soil site is only about 2,000 square feet and is identified as 75 uh, minutes per inch MPI soil. That's not enough really for any kind of a single family home. So the applicant is aware that they are going to have to do some additional testing and I think is, in, is, is trying to, to get that done. Uh, the uh, TDEC folks won't sign the plat unless there's enough soil on there for uh, at least a one bedroom uh, site. So uh, if you're comfortable making this any approval contingent upon you know, TDEC approval, uh, the staff is comfortable with that. So uh, with that, I'll just uh, be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the applicants are present as well. And all of our, just to, to follow up, all of our other comments that we had on this plat have been addressed. So beyond this, it's in good order. Eventually, I mean, at some point in the future, yes, ma'am, that's the plan. Anything to add? I think he's talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything to add? Well, it's it's going to be challenging. Um, a lot of this site is the Glable Rock, uh, but there is a sliver of Loman, which is really good soil, on the westernmost edge 
of the property, but it'll be up to the soil scientists to determine uh, adequate soil sites. Uh, typically, you need, for marginal soil, you'll need about 10,000 square feet for a three-bedroom house. Um, the lot one has that, but lot two only has a little over, like Doug said, a little over 2,000 square feet. So. Uh, home on would the home on lot two have to be sprinkled under the regulations we have uh, if it's not greater than a three lots if it's not three lots or greater than it, it's not required okay. if they want to they can but uh, it's this is just a two lot subdivision so they wouldn't have to sprinkle that if they didn't want to Is there enough soil in lot one to be off-site soils if that's needed? That might be a possibility. I think lot one's soil actually was a was a, a better yeah, it, type of soil. No, it's the same. Oh, is it the same? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so they have they have ten thousand seven hundred and almost seventy five square feet. So that's enough for a three bedroom on lot one. So as it's drawn right now, uh, probably not enough to share it at this point. No concerns with us approving it without TDEC's approval on this? Right. I mean, TDEC's going to have to sign off on it before we will anyway. So is that what you asked? I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments and contingent upon being approved by TDEC. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve 18-2026 New Zion Acres. Other questions? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. aye. Is there any opposition? Motion to approve carries, thank you. At this time, we've had a, uh, an item to come in a little bit late and I need to suspend the rules for a new item on this uh, final plat approval. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please say aye. That motion carries. This will be item 6B, uh, Pearson Farms. The item is 17-2036, 14 lots on 83.4 acres zoned RL, located off Jones Road. John Pearson is the applicant. Doug. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the reason this is coming before you today is just because the plat approval expired. Uh, this final plat was originally approved by the Planning Commission back in May of last year. Final plat approvals are good for six months. If they're not recorded, then that approval lapses. So they were getting ready to record this, and the mylar was left up in our office, and we got to looking at it, and I realized that the expiration had already passed. So they're just asking for a reapproval. Nothing has changed. It's in good order. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have a motion and a second uh, to approve item 17-2036 for Pearson Farms. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Is there any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Um, we also, under old business, um, have an item for uh, final plat approval and with uh, uh, your permission, uh, I'm going to move that up and we'll just go ahead and take care of that final plat approval as well. The item would be uh, under 7A, submitted for final plat approval, item 18-2068, Charles Hamby Jr. subdivision, three lots on 11.18 acres zone RM, located off Lake Brook Drive, which is private. Uh, Patricia Hamby is the applicant. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, you'll recall at our last meeting, this item was on the agenda for final plat approval. Uh, after discussion, it was uh, requested that this be deferred. There was some concern regarding the maintenance of this portion of Lake Brook Road. As you stated, this is a private road in this area. It's public until about that little corner that Mike's highlighting right there, private the rest of the way. Uh, following the meeting, uh, the applicant was able to uh, record a document 
that uh, we'll ask a note to be added to the plat referring to this document, and we have a copy of the reported document in our file now that does explicitly state that maintenance of this portion of the road as it fronts these properties is the responsibility of those people who will be buying those lots. So I think that was the primary concern that the Planning Commission had. So uh, with that, again, the, the plat is in, is in good order, and now that that's addressed, I think this is uh, ready to move forward. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the applicant's also present to answer any questions that you may have. How specific is the document as far as what parts of the road? It talks about the frontage. The yeah, it talks about the front. Now, it doesn't go as far as the subdivision. The, the subdivision, as it goes a little further, actually has, well, there was an HOA established years back. I don't think it's from my understanding it's not active right now, but talking with the applicant uh, that they, or the representative of the applicant at least, they are in the process of reestablishing. But I mean, that's further down the road than this anyway. So it's very specific about the frontage of these lots on the, on the frontage of these properties. So that house right there, right before you get to the subdivision, is in charge of that section? That'd be correct. A road right through and there. Whoever gets the next, so have that section. That'd be sick. Whatever fronts. Right. Right. Whatever fronts on there. So, I mean, it makes sense if they all kind of pool their resources together. But yes, it's that frontage along that portion of the land. Staff is satisfied that all concerns that the commission had have been addressed. Yes, sir. We are. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with staff comments. I have a second. Sorry. Thank you, Charlotte. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve item 7A18-2068, Charles Hamby Jr. <laughs> subdivision. Other questions? All those in favor of that motion to approve. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Doug, how many, how many lots total have been developed off this easement? There's 11, and then the, yeah, if you count the, the subject property, it'd be about, what, two, three more, two more, two more, yeah. So that's 13, is that what you said? 13 total, maybe 13. So at what point do you feel like from a planning standpoint this needs to become a public road or, or does it need to be? I don't, I don't know if there's been a conversation with Mr. Brooks about it or not, but it just seems to me like this is the definition of what we were trying to avoid when we revised our subdivision regulations and we began to limit the number of developments um, off of a private easement. It was to prevent neighborhoods from coming in piecemeal, and that's exactly right. what we have here. Right, well, unfortunately on this, I mean, we're dealing with what stuff that's already on the ground. Um, you know, if this were coming in today, would we want to see this? No, I would discourage this, or at least make them rezone as a planned development. Um, so in a sense, you know, we're just trying to make do with, with what we have. Um, I, I don't know if, I, if there's an exact number to say, you know, this is exactly where it needs to become a public road. Any further development off of here, uh, you have to do that. Quite frankly, I don't know what else. If they start wanting to develop a subdivision or something off of that, I think at that point we have some leverage to tell them, you know, since they're asking for waivers to this, at some point you have the ability to say, you know, enough's enough. Um, again, this situation being a little different because the road's already in existence. It, it is, I mean, it is what it is. So uh, you know, looking at what they're proposing here, I'm not, I don't have as much of a concern considering what's already there, but if they wanted to add another, you know, like a small subdivision like they did a little further to the east, then I think we would have some leverage right there to tell them, look, at this point you have to make at least that portion to the new subdivision public you know, beyond what, beyond that, it, you know, it's already been approved as such. So it's hard to make, I don't think we could make them go back and make a public road out of the existing subdivision. So the section of land that's approximately 44 acres that's remaining, you're thinking that if they come back and ask to develop those into lots, then at that point, 
we need I to think at that point, I think you could say, if they came in and said, hey, we want to develop 10 more lots off of this, I think at that point you could say then it needs to be a public road, at least to that section right through there. Like I said, going further into the existing subdivision, I don't think would be appropriate unless the people decided, hey, we want to make this a public road, we're going to spend the money and upgrade the road. You know, if they did that and we went out there and did our sampling and the testing to make sure that the road did meet standard, and it wanted to be a public road, then, you know, they could, that certainly is a possibility. But I don't think we can go back and make them make it a public road at this point. But what's the practical application of, of drawing that line in the sand at those 43 acres? Show me from, show me what portion of the road would be improved to county standards if, if that's where we drew the line instead of today. Yeah. Currently, the, the end of the public right of way ends in this corner. So wherever they bring the new road in, either down the existing driveway and where it balloons out to the back or through, let me pull the plat up. If they were to take it through this lot here, um, wherever that, would, that new road would intersect, we would make them upgrade this road and you know, deed this over to the county, probably with a year or two warranty in addition to the testing and sampling. So what's the distance that would be They have to be about there? 665 feet uh, from, from this corner to this corner, if you could see my cursor. And this is that where the public road ends at that the, corner? The public road ends just a little bit past here. Um, so you're, you're, yeah, just right here at, at the edge of the property. So, I mean, if, you're looking at if they took it to the existing driveway you're looking at another 570 feet other questions ready to vote we have a motion to approve item 18-2068 all those in favor of that motion to approve please say aye opposition we have one no, if you would record that, please, Gal. Motion to approve carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Up to new business, 6B, public hearings that are scheduled, uh, uh, rezonings requests that are scheduled for public hearings. 6, uh, 6B1, 18 A014, Clyde Roundtree for Huddleston Steel Engineering. The location is 4450 Sulphur Springs Road. Commission District is three. The county commissioner is Will Jordan. Size of the site is approximately 10 acres. Approximately two of those acres are for rezoning. Tax map 48, existing zoning is RM, residential medium density, and commercial services CS. Proposed zoning RM approximately 1.23 acres and CS approximately 0 0.83 acres. Whew. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, this is kind of a, it's, it's a lot simpler than it sounds on the explanation. Uh, you can see the map up on the screen right now. Uh, of course, this probably, probably looks familiar. This was actually zoned uh, commercial services and, and Mike's outlining the area proposed or th that was zoned uh, commercial services back in December of last year. Uh, since that time, uh, we have considered a site plan or at least looked at it, uh, which has been included with your agenda materials. Uh, a portion of the convenience center property uh, which is what they want to build, not a convenience center, but a uh, convenience market, I should say. Uh, and you can see the, the site plan is kind of superimposed on there. A portion of the property is actually located in the area that's still zoned residential. And you can see Mike is uh, highlighting that area right there. Basically what this request is asking for is since the plans have changed a little bit in the area that they're looking, that, that the uh, applicant, not the applicant, but the, the folks looking to buy the property or want them to purchase is a little different than what was originally zoned. Uh, they're asking for that top portion there, that orangish portion right there, they're asking for that to be zoned from RM to commercial services so that the entire site will be zoned commercial services for that site plan. And then that other portion that they had zoned commercial services, which Mike is highlighting, would be zoned back to residential medium density. So this would make it consistent with the land that was actually purchased. And you can see the lot has already been recorded, but it's got two different zoning classifications. So really, it's, this is more of a zoning ordinance cleanup and zoning map cleanup more than anything. 
and then we'll be able at that point to uh, to go back and uh, re-review that site plan. So uh, with that, uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Clyde, Mr. Roundtree is, is uh, present to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for staff before we conduct our hearing? <clears throat> Pardon me, are we changing the zoning on the, as I'm looking at it here, the left hand, the most western track? Yes, that portion right there that's in the, like the pinkish Get color, back to RM. that'll go back to RM. So we're basically swapping wow. is what you're doing. It's not a perfect swap, but it, it's a swap. Yeah. Other questions? Ready for our public hearing? This time I'll declare a public hearing open for item 18-A014, Clyde Roundtree for Huddleston Steel Engineering. Applicant here, would, would you like to make a presentation? Are you good? Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? Probably only one other choice back there since he's not getting up. I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners? Make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments. Second. Okay. Yep, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve a rezoning for 18-A014 Clyde Roundtree for Huddleston Steel Engineering. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Is there any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Uh, any other business or reports? Uh, um, no, sir. Mike, did you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. We're, uh, we're going to be working on some subdivision regulation changes, uh, so you'll be seeing those pretty soon. Um, and also, we. I'm going to, and Doug as well, going to work on uh, maybe. Uh, Finally, doing some submittal fee changes, uh, land disturbance fee changes, um, just to be current. It's been a while since we've updated those fees. Thank you, Mike. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, the 23rd of July, 9 a.m. in the planning mess. Any other comments? I, I, received a, I, just, I received an email today that I think is of interest not only to this group, but it may be to citizens out there as well. The Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee is accepting applications for the Transit Citizen Leadership Academy. It's every Wednesday. It's a six-week course. It begins September 15th through October 10th. Uh, it is in Nashville from 4 to 6.30 p.m. Um, and basically their goal is to discuss and, and educate folks on regional transit issues. And so since that's a pressing issue for all of us, um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to participate this time, but I just I thought this group would want to know if you didn't receive emails on it, and the citizens might want to know again. Um, so it's the Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee accepting applications for the Transit Citizen Leadership Academy. Reminder for everyone that public uh, and the public that's listening that uh, early voting starts uh, in the next few days, uh, and. Uh, we'll go until, uh, I believe it's August the 2nd, if I'm not mistaken, which will be Election Day. It's not. That weekend is before, and it's usually when they do it. The early voting will start uh, soon, and we'll go on for a couple of weeks, and then uh, the general election, I believe, is uh, Thursday the 2nd of August, if I'm not mistaken. So everyone be prepared to uh, go out and make your selection this year. Uh, with all that, uh, we're adjourned. Thank you for your participation.